Hey guys, John here with a, I guess, long overdue review of the new operating system for Apple computers, Leopard. Um, first thing, uh, before I get started, is this isn't going to be a video demonstration of the features. Uh, there have been copious other videos that have done that, and probably better than I could ever do. So, up here, I'm going to put some links uh, that'll give you some video demonstration of the features I'm going to talk about. This video is just going to be my impressions of the operating system as a whole, having used it uh, since launch day. So, first uh, thing I'll talk about, and kind of the main issue everybody wants to know, is stability. In all the time that I've had Leopard now, which has been coming up on a, on a month, it hasn't crashed on me once. Um, the computer has just been rock solid. It was rock solid with Tiger, too, but things just feel a little zippier. Um, the boot up time is a little bit slower, probably about three or four seconds slower. But the operating system, operating system itself has just been been really quick um, once it's loaded up. So you know, if you're worried about stability with the new operating system, don't worry. This isn't uh, isn't Vista, not a knock on Microsoft. It's just uh, Apple's OSs aren't plagued with some issues that that Microsofts are. So some of the first, some of the cool features um, and the big features, and I'll talk a little bit about the smaller ones. Uh, the first big one, and the one that I use all the time, actually have needed to use is Time Machine. So what Time Machine is, is essentially it's automated backup. So what you need to have in order to make Time Machine work is you need to have an external hard drive that's bigger than your internal drive on your computer. And one thing to note, when you activate Time Machine in Leopard, it'll delete all the content off of your external drive, so just be aware of that firsthand. And what it does is it gives you a three-dimensional view of your desktop. So let's say you are working in uh, Microsoft Word and you had all your Word documents saved in a Word documents folder on your desktop and all of a sudden you accidentally deleted a, a file. Well you can actually open up that folder, click Time Machine, you'll get a three-dimensional view of all the folders going back and you can go back to wherever that document was before you lost it, click it, hit restore and it's back and that's it. And everything is totally automated, you don't have to do anything. As soon as you plug in your external drive, the operating system asks you if you want to activate Time Machine, you hit yes and that's it, that's all you got to do. Um, my 500 gigabyte MyBook that I've been using has been awesome. I recommend it if you're looking for an external hard drive. Otherwise, I've heard all of them have been pretty good. Um, so that's just that. No, Time Machine has been a really, really, really good future. Feature. Um, I had a paper I was working on that for whatever reason I ended up, I was tired, it was late, and I ended up deleting a paragraph that I didn't want to delete, and I saved it and closed it. I realized it the next morning, and um, I was able to use Time Machine to bring back an old version of the document um, open up that paragraph and paste it right back in. So I can already attest to how good Time Machine is, and I'm sure as things go on, I'm only going to be um, happier with it and find more uses for it. So the Time Machine, highly recommend it. I think that alone is worth the cost of the operating system. Uh, the next cool thing is something called Spaces. And what Spaces is, it's essentially um, it's virtualized desktops. So let's say you are downloading music from iTunes, um, browsing the web, and you're, I don't know, editing a, you're editing a video and it's processing. What you can do now is have a separate workspace for each. Um, you activate spaces, I think you can hit control and then the arrow keys and it turns spaces on. And it actually filters through uh, your desktop. It gives you an icon on your screen of how many desktops you have. And you can just um, drag and drop um, different windows into different uh, virtual spaces. I think that's one of the thing that this review, um, you know, could probably uh, could probably use and check out the video for a review of Spaces. That'll help you guys out. Um, help you guys out a lot. So Spaces is is a great feature. I haven't really used it that much because I have the dual screens. But if I didn't have dual screens, I could see Spaces being a really, really, really great uh, feature, especially if you're traveling. Um, one of the next cool things, other than Spaces, um, to note is the new iChat. Um, iChat is instant messaging client that comes built in. And that has some really cool features. Actually, I've got a list here that I can uh, help you guys with a little bit. So, so some of the cool stuff with iChat, you get new um, photo booth effects. So you can set up backgrounds in the back, make it look like you're underwater, um, on a roller coaster, all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, one of the nicest features is this thing called uh, screen sharing. And you really what you can do is you can collaborate with a friend right over iChat. Uh, you can work on anything you want, whether it's a presentation in Keynote or PowerPoint, and um, you invite the other person to a connection, it actually brings up their desktop on your screen, and um, 
you know you can share it similar to like pc anywhere um or remote remote desktop um but just really easy to do and you can only do it with mac to mac um you know which makes it really easy hold on phone drain call her back um so that's one of the real cool features with uh with iChat is uh, the screen sharing thing. Um, it's got a lot of other too. You can record now yourself in iChat. You can use multiple logins. You can make yourself look invisible. You get animated buddy icons. There's uh, like an iChat theater. So you can show nearly any file um, on your system through an iChat video conference. So if you're giving a presentation for work or something or school, you can have everybody log in via iChat. You can show them your keynote or PowerPoint presentation. Anyway, that can be a, a real handy feature, too. Um, so those are some of the biggest features, I think, um, with Leopard. You know, in addition, there's a three-dimensional dock and kind of some cursory stuff. But overall, there are 300-plus new features, and those are the highlights of them. Um, you know, there's uh, Google Map addresses in your address book. There's new stuff with AppleScript. Automator is updated. Um, Bootcamp is now out of beta and officially part of Leopard. So if you want to run Bootcamp now, you have to have Leopard. And check out my video on Bootcamp versus Parallels and tell you what Bootcamp is. But essentially, it allows you to run uh, Windows XP or Vista on your uh, on your Mac natively. And again, you need a full install disk of Vista or XP. It doesn't come with Bootcamp. Um, Dashboard is now updated to use this thing called Web Clips. You can clip out any portion of a web page and just drag it onto dashboard and make it a widget. And whenever that page gets updated, it'll show up on dashboard. It's actually really cool because if you look at um, I don't know, if you look at my page and you look at Echo Fish's pages and you look at Engadget or ESPN, you can clip those now right to dashboard. Open up dashboard and see if any of us have anything new that you want to see. Um, so that's kind of neat. Um, and I guess one of the last feature that I use a lot is this thing called Stacks. And what Stacks is, it's you can really organize all your files into a really nice, neat stack. And one click and the stack kind of opens up. And um, it really opens up in kind of a straight file. And you can just open anything up, anything you want. So I've, I go to um, some pictures a lot. So I set up my pictures folder as a stack. And it's really handy. You can view it as a list or view all your icons at once. Um, so you can sort them, you can download stacks, it's really easy. Uh, there's also a new front row. The front row, um, is very similar to the front row on Apple TV. It looks just the same now. So, um, you know, that's nice. I really like the way that looks. There's a lot of graphics and media stuff updated too. There's new core animations and updated OpenGL. And there's new stuff in iCal. And I'll post some links again over there to list some new features. Um... There's some stuff for, you know, and analyzing templates and mail has new features. It's got, or iMail, it's got new stationery, uh, new RSS readers. Um, photo booth has some new effects in there too. It's kind of a updated interface. So that's nice if you use photo booth. Um, and the last thing I almost forgot to mention is this thing called quick view. It's actually what I use, one of the things I use most in Leopard. If you're ever going through a huge, um, list of files and you want to see which one it is you can click on it hit your space bar it opens up a quick view it actually opens up the document without opening up the program so if you have an, an adobe program it'll open it up without opening up um you know photoshop whatever it is you actually see what the document looks like open up a word document or open up um keynote presentation you can see what it is really neat highly recommend there a picture you click the picture hit space and it opens up the picture so i think that's very worthwhile um, anyway, guys, sorry I couldn't show videos and demonstrations here. Um, YouTube is going to cut me off in just a minute to keep it under 10. Um, so I want to let you guys know some of the new features. In addition, CoverFlow, you can sort documents via CoverFlow like you can in iTunes. So that was just a quick uh, summation of Leopard. Overall, I'm very happy with it. It's certainly worth the upgrade. Anyway, guys, enjoy. Have a nice afternoon or evening wherever you're at. And anyway, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye.